Hey guys, this week's vlog is all about creating your own circle in 2018. Let's do it. Roll the intro. Gather up your weary souls. Show them you ain't dead. Tell them all you ain't coming home. Woo, Hey guys, and welcome back to this week's vlog. Before we get started, I want to remind you, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel. And if you like today's video, be sure and give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, hit the thumbs button down twice. All right, folks, this week's vlog is all about creating circles this year. And if you're not a big fan of geometry, don't worry, there's no math included in today's vlog. But what I do want to talk to you about, especially for the music industry, is you've always heard that there is a circle. Now, one of the things that I want to set straight about this circle is that a lot of people think that this circle gets bigger, that more people come into this circle and so therefore the size of the circle increases. That is untrue. Um, what you need to know about the inner circle here in Nashville is that the size of it never changes whatsoever not ever now you'll get people come in of into the circle you'll get people move out of the circle and people swap places all the time but that circle never gets bigger it always stays the same size so when you think about that and you think about okay well there's only so many room so much room for somebody to be on the quote unquote inner circle how can you still succeed when the industry set up that way I want to tell you something that I've been doing over the last three to five years that, that I have found for me has just worked tremendously well. And I'll pass this on to you. And, and it's something that I would encourage you guys to look at and, and do as well. And that is create your own circles. The music business has changed so much um, over the recent years. And, you know, a lot of what's happening here in Nashville, especially in the country music world, uh, but really what's happening in music business in general is it's no longer that small little group of people that are that are responsible for pretty much 90 to 100 percent of the success that you see in the music business. You start seeing these little pockets of different people, little circles where people weren't getting inside that quote unquote inside circle. And so you, what you had is, is people started going out and creating their own circles and that's what I would encourage you to do don't be so concerned with about getting on the inside or the inner circle what I encourage you to do is find that group of people that you can trust first and foremost that you work really well with that you get along with that you have a lot in common with stylistically but then also bring people into that circle that don't necessarily have the strengths that you have that have a strength that lie in another area of music or another field of music or another expertise bring in pieces of to the puzzle that you don't already have into that circle as well that's a very important part of being successful in the music business is not constantly surrounding yourself with people that do exactly what you do write the exact exact kind of songs that you write or play the same instrument or or think the same way you, you want to surround yourself with an eclectic group of people that are just like I said it's like a puzzle you've got certain pieces to the puzzle they have certain pieces to the puzzle so your circle you form the circle and you bring people in that have pieces to the puzzle that you don't have. You know, you may reach out to somebody who, who like for me, I'm not Mr. Social. Like I don't go out and do all of the industry showcase stuff. I don't go to all the industry events. It's just not my thing. I don't drink and a lot of this business is, is based around conversations that happen over alcohol. And I don't drink, so that's an uncomfortable situation for me. Um, I've always found that if I, if I ever was in that situation, it's kind of funny how the things that you would talk about um, while somebody's having drinks, they don't remember the next day anyway. So you think you're getting something accomplished, and then you realize you're really, you're really not getting anything accomplished at all. And, and what good does that do? So 
for me, I, I started reaching out and and looking to build relationships and bring people into my circle who were more outgoing, who were uh, more socially involved than I was, so that they can go out and they're doing what they're good at and they're bringing opportunities back into your circle. So think of it that way. It's very important to create opportunities for your circle. And I think that you do that by bringing unique individuals into your circle. And if you look around the music business in Nashville, Los Angeles, New York, you'll start to see that where a lot of this success is coming from is from these smaller circles. It's it's not necessarily that inside group again that is responsible for a lot of the success. You know, you see a lot of independent artists that are starting to have a lot of success. Cody Johnson, they just announced it the other day, a Texas artist just sold out NRG Stadium uh, in Houston. Uh, What a major accomplishment for a guy without a record label. Uh, That's an amazing feat. And he has his circle. Um, So that's what I wanted to talk with you about this week, is don't focus so much of your time trying to get on the inside or be a part of this specific circle. Go out and create your own circle. Go out and identify new songwriters, young artists that haven't necessarily reached that level yet, but that you can all work together and reach that level together. Now, here's a very important part of this whole algorithm and and idea of circ- putting circles together. It, for it to work, it requires something very unique in this business. And that is being loyal to one another. Not only is it important to go out and find people that have strengths that you don't have to have in your circle, but the most important thing that you need to look for when it comes to a quality you want in somebody that you're going to bring into your creative circle is somebody that's loyal. Somebody that is loyal to the circle. Somebody that is, when you do for them, they do for you. You know, a a lot of people get very misguided in the music business. They come to Nashville and they think they're making friends and you're not. First and foremost, always remember that this is a business first. It, It actually should be called the business music because a lot of people make the mistake of getting all wrapped up in the creativity and the fun part and the passion that comes along with the term music. But this is a business, and it's a business first. So try to surround yourself with people that, for God's sakes, abide by the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You be loyal to them, and hopefully in return, they will show that loyalty to you. It's all about strength in numbers, putting a circle of people around you and you also being around those other people and providing a support system for creativity, for advancement, for knowledge and education when it comes to the music business. You're all gonna bring something different to the table and that's an amazing thing. Your circle should be a melting pot of ideas and creativeness and outlets and strengths that one person has where their strength overcomes your weakness or your strength overcomes their weakness and it becomes like a fine, well-oiled and tuned machine. And your circle can be as many people as you want it to be. I'm not saying that this has to be a two or three person thing. My circle right now, I'm in actually involved in several different circles. And that's something else you, you want to, to really try to involve yourself in is, yes, you want to be loyal to your circle, but it doesn't mean that you have to just have one circle. Maybe you have several different circles that you're involved in. When I say that, I'll use myself as, as an example. In the country music world, I have my circle. I have certain writers that I like to write with um, that I don't necessarily write with new people. Unless they're an artist with a record deal, um, I don't really write with new artists or new songwriters. Um, Because I, this is, again, it's a business and the best use of my time 
is when I sit down to write something that has a better than not chance of going somewhere and accomplishing something. So I have found a group of writers when it comes to country music that I enjoy writing with, that I know when we get together for three or four or five hours in a day that we're going to walk out of there with a great song and it takes the guesswork out of it for me. When it comes to pop, I have another group of people that I work with that that don't do anything in the country world. They're, they're exclusively pop and rock guys. And so I have a circle there. If I'm doing a, pro, a pop project or a rock project, I tend to gravitate and have a circle there with people that specialize more in, in pop and rock. Same thing with television and film. When I'm writing music for t a TV show or a movie or a feature film or anything like that, I have a group of people that I work with that that's their forte. That's their specialty. And inside each one of those circles are people that are signed to major labels and signed to major publishing companies and signed to um, artist development deals. Um, and and in each one of these different circles, there are people that lift my weakness up and make me stronger in each one of those areas. And I know for a fact that I bring that to the table and I have certain strengths that they may not have in those circles. So it works out for everybody. So yes, it's about creating a circle, but it's also about being a part of several circles. You know, we've all heard that thing, you know, don't, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Um, it's kind of the same thing here. I don't form one circle and think that that circle is going to take over the world. Um, your odds increase dramatically when you spread yourself around. And, and that's what I would encourage you to do. Take a look around. Identify the things that you want to do. What do you want to be involved in? What types of music? Do you want to do TV and film? All those different things. Look around there and look and find individuals that bring strengths to your weaknesses and that are loyal and that want to work together. And those are the, the people that you want to surround yourself with. This is a tough business. Uh, this is a business where a lot of people say, you know, you get stabbed in the back a lot. That's incorrect. The music business is a business where people smile at your face and stab you in the stomach at the same time. So it is about finding people that you want to spend time with, um, quite frankly, people that you are going to invest in. You are going to invest your time, effort, passion, and resources into these circles that you put yourself in. So you want to make sure that you're making a good investment and that you're making an investment into this circle and these people that you're going to see a return from. And there's nothing wrong in this business with expecting a return. There, There is the music business, I tell a lot of people, is just like the stock market. It's no different. It's gambling, and it is just like the stock market. What you want to do is buy in low and sell high. And so when you look around, look for people that make you better than what you are right now. Um, I heard something a while back, and, and I thought this was, this was actually very interesting. Um, a billionaire uh, was doing a, a conference, and he made this statement uh, that somebody had told him, and he implemented this into his his business and his career and his lifestyle, and he watched his business grow tremendously because of it. And that was this. He said to spend 33% of your time with people who are at the same level as you. Spend 33% of your time with people that are at the next level or at the level where you want to be. And also spend 33% of your time with people that are one or two rungs below you. That provides for a very well-rounded individual so that it shows you where you're coming from and allows you the opportunity to help somebody else get to where you are. And then you spend time with people that are on the same level as you because you're going to think on the same wavelength. You're thinking the same creatively, and that's very valuable. And then spend time with people who are at a place that you're trying to go and that you want to be because that constantly fuels the drive creatively in you to be able to look at somebody that's at a certain spot and go, that's where I want to be. I want to spend as much time around them as possible. And like I said, it just creates for being a well-rounded individual and building a well-rounded 
company around yourself, and in today, what we're talking about today, I guarantee if you build your circle like that, if you build your circle in the 33% of the people that aren't where you are yet, 33% of your time and your circle with people who are right where you are, and then 33% of those people make up your circle who are a few steps ahead of you and where you want to go. A rising tide raises all ships. Yes, this is a selfish business and it is a me, 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 me business. But I'm telling you, a lot of me, 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 me sound a lot better when they're saying together. And I encourage you this year in 2018, look around yourself. Find the people that think the way that you think, that create the way that you create, that have strengths that amplify your weaknesses and turn your weaknesses into strengths. And then you also play your part and do that for others. Create your own circles in 2018. And I promise you that if you look at where you are right now versus where you want to be a year down the road, I guarantee you'll be a lot closer to your goal and where you want to be if you create these circles and you're loyal to those people and they're loyal to you. And I think they will be loyal to you if they see it from you. You don't want to be used in this business, which is very easily done. You get used a lot in this business. Learn where to draw that line between being used and being loyal. It's tough for some people, but this is a tough business. I wish you all the success in 2018 in creating your own circles because that's where it's going to be. It's never been a more exciting time to be an independent in the music business, and this is how you find success in it, is by creating circles and working together and creating a chorus of we, 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 instead of me, me, me. I know it sounds kind of funny. But anyway, guys, uh, I'm about to head off for the weekend. I'm going to run up to St. Louis and uh, check out a hockey game. The Blues and the Blackhawks going to be a lot of fun. Hope you've had a great week. I hope you have a great weekend uh, coming up. More than anything, I hope you got something out of this week's vlog. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit that little bell next to it so that you're notified every time I upload new content. And it'll go to your email and all those fun things. And you know and you can watch the, uh, the new vlogs and the new content as I put it up. As always, you can find me on social media. Follow me, friend me, all that. Tweet me, good stuff. It's at the Steve Freeman on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and everywhere else. Guys, thank you so much for watching the vlog this week. And until next week, don't forget, keep moving forward, keep pushing the boundaries, keep being creative. See you next week. Show them you